let's implement what we've learned concerning robust standard errors. And for this purpose, we're going to use two different data sets. Um, the first one will be used in order to estimate HAC estimators with the help of Newey West. And in this data set, we're going to look at the impact of investments on uh, the number of unemployed people in uh, Germany from the 1960s to the 1970s. And we'll do this with normal standard errors and with Newey West standard errors that account for serial correlation and heteroscedasticity. And the second example is going to look at the spending behavior of individuals. And for this example, we'll get HC standard errors to account for heteroscedasticity only by using HC3 estimators. So let's start. Um, the first thing I do is read in, the in, uh, read in the time series data. Then I have to declare an R that this is time series data. And I won't go over that because we will cover time series regression in later videos. So as usual, my time series regressions are deliberately flawed in order to get serial correlated errors. So just don't do that at home. This is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so let's read in, view and attach my data. So my uh, data frame is called auto. Okay, we've done that. And by the way, this is real data. So um, this is not made up. Okay, let, now I got to declare that this is time series data. And next I'm going to construct a time series model. And again, don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing. We'll cover this in later videos extensively. So um, the model I'm constructing is called uh, auto model. So auto model. And basically what I'm doing is I'm, re I'm regressing the uh, number of unemployed people on the uh, on investment. So invest TS, this is the variable of interest right here. Okay. Okay. Great, now we have our model. So um, let's print out the summary. Okay, so we want, want to have the summary. Summary for auto model. Auto model. All right. Um, it seems like we have a good model, right? I mean, investments are highly significant and point to the predicted direction. But what about serial correlation? Uh, well, let's do a Durbin Watson test. So first of all, we need the awesome LM test package. And you should be familiar with that stuff by now. If not, uh, go ahead and watch the preceding videos. So first of all, we got to load the LM test um, package. So library, open parentheses, LM test. All right. And we got to do a Durbin Watson test on our model. So DW test, open parentheses, auto, oops, auto model. Yikes, um, 0.717 is far from 2.0 and we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis of no serial correlation. So we need to correct for that. And this is the point in time when new things come into play. And remember, we need Newey West to estimate robust standard errors. And we do this by combining the LM test package and the sandwich package. And we're going to build our command inside the coef test command, since we are interested in obtaining new standard errors for our coefficients. So first, let's load the sandwich package. Okay, so library, on parenthesis, sandwich, sandwich. All right. And um, let's get our HAC estimators. So what we do is we put in coef test on the parentheses and then we put in the name of our model. And basically, um, if you would just put in auto model, coef test would just give you back the uh, normal test statistics for your coefficients. Okay, so uh, this is what we would get if you wouldn't put anything else in there, if you would just put in the um, model's name, okay? But we don't want that. We want robust standard errors. So we, what we got to do is we got to put in a comma and then you put in VCOV equals and we want the new West procedure. So we put in new E capital W West one word, new E capital W West in one word. Hit enter and this or this is um, our the, or these are our coefficients with the, the robust standard errors. Well, generally cove test is a great command to get test statistics for all sort of estimates. Um, but as you, you have seen, it also takes the argument of VCOV, where you specify a covariance matrix of the coefficients. And this is, so this right here, this is where you put in the procedure we like to use in order to get our robust estimates. Um, 
as you can see, using UE West standard errors is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is put in UE West. And again, make sure you put in a capital W. And what you get, so what we get down here um, are new test statistics for your regression coefficients. So our, um, um, so, so just let's compare them, okay? So let's put in coef test parentheses auto model. So this will give us back the uh, normal test statistics for our coefficients. So without, so this right here is the uh, test statistic for our estimates without robust standard errors. And this is with robust standard errors. Okay, so let's compare them. Um, okay, remember, the problem was not biasness. Okay, the problem with serial correlation was that our standard errors are too narrow. So the estimates or the estimate of our um, variable of interest right here, um, the estimate um, should be the same, right? Because our estimates are not biased. But now take a look at the standard errors. Um, and again, the, the estimates are the same. So if you compare them, the estimates are the same. But let's have a look at the standard errors. Well, while they are very small um, in the, uh, so while they're very small in the normal test statistics, so this is without robust standard errors, um, they are very, very small. Um, but they are much higher when we account for autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity right here. So this is the robust standard error for our, our errors for our um, variable of interest. So they got much wider. Um, and they got so high, in fact, that they are not even um, significant on a 0.05 level. Um, what would have happened if we didn't compute robust standard errors? Well, we would have thought, so what would have happened if this wouldn't have been done by us? So we would, we would have just gotten these, uh, this, uh, these test statistics down here, okay? And what would have happened is, um, we would have thought that the effect investments have on the number of unemployed people is highly significant, right? Because it tells us so. But this is only because of serial correlation within the data. So always make sure you check whether your assumptions are not violated. This is extremely important because as you can see, um, if we're not accounting for a serial correlation, we think that the, the um, level of investments um, has a, have a, has a uh, high effect on the number of unemployed people. But in fact, if you actually control for serial correlation or if you account for serial correlation, the effect becomes not significant, okay? Um, so let's turn to the HC estimator. So first we need to read in our data, okay? So let's read in the data. So let's construct a second data, uh, data, data frame that's called hetero. And um, let's view and attach that data frame. So let's view and attach it. All right. And this is fictitious. This is a fictitious data set containing information on the spending behavior and income of some individuals. Well, this could be anything. Imagine this as being data of uh, workers in a plant. So first of all, let's build our model. Okay, so we want a model. Let's call it hetero model. Assignment operator LM. And what we're doing is we regress the spending on income, okay? And the rationale behind this model is that the more you earn, the more you spend. Pretty simple. Um, let's take a look at that model, okay? So summary, hetero model, all right? And um, looks like we found a pretty good model. Um, okay, but let's get our robust standard errors. Remember, this time we are only interested in accounting for heteroscedasticity. So um, again, of course, you uh, could do the uh, BP test in order to check for um, heteroscedasticity. Let's do this. Hetero model. All right, and then we have enough um, evidence, or we, we we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis of um, um, homoscedasticity, and therefore we have to assume that there is heteroscedasticity within our model. Okay, so we definitely know that. So let's let's get our uh, robust standard errors. So what you do is you put in coef 
test, open the parentheses, put in the name of the model again, hetero model, and basically it's the same as with Newey West estimators. You put in VCOV equals, and this time we're not going to use Newey West, we're going to use uh, VCOV, so basically the same, but HC because we want HC estimators, okay? All right, and uh, this time instead of putting in Newey West, um, we are only putting in VCOV HC since we only want HC estimators, okay? And um, also let's get our normal coefficients again. So coef test open parentheses uh, hetero model. All right, and um, so again, on the upper panel, you can find our coefficients, or over here, you can find our coefficients with robust standard errors, and on the lower panel, you can find our coefficients with uh, st normal standard errors. Um, our variable of interest is income, so INC. Um, again, um, the estimate doesn't change, okay? So the estimate uh, doesn't change. That one is correct. But again, our standard error increased. So as you can see over here, this is our standard error if we don't account for heteroscedasticity, and this is our standard error if we actually account for heteroscedasticity with an uh, HC estimator. So um, luckily this time our coefficient is still significant on a 0.05 level, but the standard error has increased. Um, okay. As you might remember from the last video, there are five different HC estimators and you could always change what estimator you're using. Um, so for example, you, you just put in coef test, open parentheses, and then you put in the name of the model again, hetero model, you already know that, VCOV equals, and then you put in VCOV again, HC of course, but then you open the parentheses, again, you put in hetero model, okay, comma, and then you type in type equals ex uh, um, quotation marks, and uh, then you gotta declare um, what type of model or what type of HC estimator you'd like to have. So you can put in HC for, ex for example, right? Um, so let's do that. Um, instead of HC4, you could also use any other HC estimator uh, that we've talked about in the last video. Um, so I highly recommend you read the text of Achim Zellais I put into the description under the last video. There are also ways to tweak your robust standard errors and therefore I really suggest you read that um, uh, document. So always make sure you account for violation of the assumptions by using robust standard errors, okay?